The most dramatic chapter in the history of the Lindisfarne Gospels came a century and a half after Yadfrith's death. Viking raids forced the monks to flee their island home. They took with them their most precious possessions, the Lindisfarne Gospels, of course, but also the body of their most revered bishop, St Cuthbert. The modern centerpiece of St Mary's Church is this sculpture called The Journey. And it's a dramatic representation of the moment that the monks and the Gospels left Lindisfarne. It's really quite powerful and sombre in this setting and you can't help but feel sympathy for these men as they left the island for the last time. I could see this epic story, so how could I express this journey? Durham-born Fenwick Lawson has been an artist and sculptor for over 60 years. His acclaimed sculpture, The Journey, was carved from seven elm trees. There was something very interesting happening while I was actually doing this. Uh, layers of meaning that I wasn't actually, in a sense, uh, expecting or I didn't preconceive. You know, it was like happening after the event. And in one sense, it was becoming larger than just, than just six months carrying Cuthbert's body. You know, I'm from a mining community. My father always said he depended for his life down the pit, you know, for his, on his marrows, you know, on his other workmen. They all had a responsibility for safety. Their lives depended on it. And it, it formed a, a bond which is very strong and very meaningful. These could equally be six miners carrying their brother. And the monks were carrying their brother. Fenwick's life work, which includes St Cuthbert at Lindisfarne Priory and the Pietà in Durham Cathedral, has developed into an exploration of our humanity. I wanted to get past, you need to be religious to engage with a religious image. If you're not, you tend to put up a barrier. But I, I find that that barrier is totally unnecessary. For instance, um, Christ condemned is every man condemned. He's a prisoner of conscience. He's a political prisoner. I hear stories that the, the Pieta moves, moves people, you know. And when that was challenged by um, some of my colleagues as being just religious, it's, it's, uh, it's a mother with a dead son. We must become more than we are. We need to grow into humanity. And that's, that's the message. And I think it's an important one. I think it's you know, a primary message to be stated. And I'm using my my voice as a sculptor to try and give voice to this.
The monks of Lindisfarne travelled all over the north of England before settling in the newly built Durham Cathedral. St Cuthbert's resting place has been a site of pilgrimage ever since. But it was not the end of the journey for the Gospels, and this year marks a rare return to the northeast for this jewel of our medieval heritage. To mark the occasion, a Lindisfarne Gospels community choir has been formed, and Martin Ward and his family volunteered to take part. The music that we have to sing, there's some really beautiful pieces. It just becomes an act of worship when you're singing. Not bad, lovely. You feel that you're part of a body because you're singing with all these other people and all your voices are joining together and to produce something that's far better than any per one person's voice on its own can produce. Singing shouldn't be left to just that tiny percentage of the population who can sing fantastically well. It's actually something everybody can do. One thing I like about this choir is that there's no competition involved. It's, there's, no, um, there's no auditions that anybody is welcome to join it and be part of it. One, two, three. In our society, there's a huge emphasis on competition. And the thing with competition is that if, we, if you and I are competing, then if I win, you lose. Uh, if you win, I lose. But if you and I are cooperating on something, then if you win, I win. And the choir is very much about uh, cooperation, about working together. The Lindisfarne Gospels were produced not as a result of any competition. <laughs> they didn't have a... Uh, the way we do it nowadays, we'd say, oh, we, it'd be good to have some, some Gospels that are really beautiful, so let's hold the Lindisfarne Gospels competition and let's get a load of Gospel writers to compete and then we'll judge them and then the, the one of them will pick out and that'll be the winner and all the others will be the losers. <laughs> but that's not what happened because uh, the person who wrote the Gospels just wanted to produce the best that he could because the Gospel message was so important and so uh, wonderful and fantastic. <laughs> 